The next-gen version of Cyberpunk 2077 is still on track for the end of 2021, with a little bit of wiggle room. No Man's Sky has finally released the Frontiers update, Brendan Green, the creator of PUBG, is starting a brand new studio, and the Tokyo Game Show schedule is now live. I am Persia, and this is today's GameSpot News Update. Plenty of big 2021 games have been delayed to 2022, mostly because of the pandemic, but CD Projekt Red said the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S versions of Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher 3 remain on track for release this year. It was said on an earnings call that Cyberpunk 2077's next-gen version still has a target date of late 2021, but at the same time, keeping in mind the lessons we have learned during the past year and taking into account that this project still remains in development, we can't say with full certainty that the production schedule will not change. And a similar sentiment was shared in regards to The Witcher 3. Cyberpunk 2077's PS5 and Xbox Series X and S editions will take advantage of the additional horsepower of those systems to make the game look and run better. And the same is true for The Witcher 3. The game is going to come with all of the previously released expansions and even includes some new content inspired by Netflix's hit Witcher TV show. No Man's Sky's latest updates have been explosive and really awesome. We've gotten new pets, we've gotten new gameplay modes, and even more. But the newest update, Frontiers, is going to possibly have a bigger impact on the game than any of the ones before it. Frontiers, which players can download right now, adds a settlement system to No Man's Sky, letting players build their own town that they can manage on an alien planet. Players won't be able to plop their own settlement down wherever they'd like, but will instead have to earn the title of Overseer at an existing one. The role of a town overseer includes sorting out all kinds of disputes, resolving arguments between villagers, defending the town from attacking sentinels, and more. Players who manage to keep their settlements happy and productive will earn some resources every day. Frontiers is also giving No Man's Sky players the tools they need to build a unique settlement or base really easily. Base building has received multiple updates including a new building menu, placement modes, and over 250 new parts. Sean Murray said on Twitter, we're excited for what it allows us to do in the future, which means Frontiers may not be the end for new content in No Man's Sky, but it does mean the end of having the developer's face being modded into the game. We've got the full list of patch notes and all of the other new details over on GameSpot.com. Brendan Green, better known by his online persona Player Unknown, has officially announced that he will be leaving the PUBG developer and publisher Crafton to form his own independent studio, Player Unknown Productions. In 2019, Green moved to Amsterdam to set up Player Unknown's productions under Crafton's PUBG Corporation, moving away from development on PUBG to work on new projects. Now, Player Unknown Productions will officially be splitting from Crafton to become an independent studio, with Crafton holding a minority stake in the studio. The studio's first project, Prologue, was announced at the 2019 Game Awards, though it's unclear whether the project will be impacted by the studio's split. Green said in a press release, Today, I'm excited to take the next step on my journey to create the kind of experience I've envisaged for years. Again, I'm thankful for everyone at Crafton for supporting my plans, and I'll have more to reveal about our project at a later date. The press release adds that the team over at Player Unknown Productions are researching systems needed to enable massive scale in multiplayer games. Hmm. Konami, Capcom, Square Enix, and so many more are among the lists that have appeared on the schedule for Tokyo Game Show. There aren't too many details about every presentation just yet, but Square Enix has confirmed its dedicated Tokyo Game Show segment that will offer the latest news about their upcoming titles along with pre-announced information. The Square in Extreme will take place on October 1st at 3 a.m. Pacific, 6 a.m. Eastern, and will run for just under an hour. Square Enix has no shortage of games that could make an appearance, including Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Final Fantasy XIV's Inwalker expansion that's due out in November, and several mobile games, such as Final Fantasy The First Soldier and Hitman Sniper The Shadows. Microsoft will also host a showcase at the Tokyo Game Show with a 50-minute event on September 30th that's titled The Xbox Tokyo Game Show Showcase 2021. 
You'll have to be up early for that one, as it's scheduled to be streamed at 2 a.m. Pacific and 5 a.m. Eastern. Not every presentation has been announced or confirmed just yet, as a lot of the slots on the schedule are still to be determined, but make sure you subscribe because we're going to be keeping you up to date on all the Tokyo Game Show news as it comes in. I'm definitely ready to hop into No Man's Sky today and become a space mayor. <laughs> but honestly, with Cyberpunk on the mind, I'm really curious to know from you guys, what do you think about the next-gen versions? And what exactly is it going to take to get you to hop back in if you've decided to step away? Let me know down below in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for tuning in again, and I'll see you tomorrow for your next update.